Thank you for introduction. Um, my name is Sangung Yun. Uh, hola, mi hombre es Sangung Yun. Muchas gracias. Um, actually, this um, uh, session is a combined session by sponsored by Celtron Healthcare and RV Farm Pharma. So, um, I'm just um, briefly touched on the explanation about our Celtron and the key pipeline and current status of Infliximab biosimilar. So our company, Sertrion, was founded in 2002, and the headquarter is located in Incheon City in South Korea. And our facility is about 140 kilometer mammalian cell culture capacity, and it was uh, inspected by US FDA and European Medicines Agency, and INVIMA, and uh, MFDS in Korea. At this moment, Sertrion has uh, two plants. Uh, plant 1 and Plant 2 were constructed in 2005 and 2011. And Plant 1 has, um, uh, will have additional uh, mammalian cell capacity about uh, 50 kiloliter until 2018. And a new Plant 3 will be constructed in 2020. And especially Plant 2 uh, have a special facility, fill and finish facility, to finalize the drug substance. And here is the Sertrion history. Uh, basically, Sertrion's initial business has started as a CMO to manufacture the Abatacept, uh, uh, Orangea for BMS. So everything is of Sertrion focused on biosimilar, had started with the um, uh, overarching guideline, uh, focused on similar uh, medicinal bios, biosimilar product, uh, drafted by uh, European Medicine Agency. And our uh, product, CTP-13, its commercial name is Ramsima, uh, is approved in MFDS in Korea in 2012, and then IMA has approved uh, the REMSIMA for all indications we claimed in 2013. And Health Canada followed in 2014. But uh, Health Canada uh, excluded the uh, uh, approval for the IBD indication. Uh, and Japan followed in July 14. And in this uh, in April 2016, US FDA uh, has approved the uh, CTP-13 for all indications. Uh, in the meanwhile, Health Canada uh, in June 2016 has approved the REMSIMA for IBD indications. And um, to briefly give you about the information, our key product, a biosimilar, uh, at this moment, we have three uh, uh, biosimilar uh, molecules. Uh, Remsima is um, infliximab biosimilar. Already we have successfully uh, launched the Remsima, and presumably uh, the Rituximab biosimilar, its brand name will be Truxima, has approved in this February by IMA. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, this um, Rituximab biosimilar uh, in this June. So the indications is uh, uh, focused on the hematological cancer, include rheumatoid arthritis. And the other thing is Trastuzumab biosimilar. Its brand name is Hojuma. Um, this is a good uh, biosimilar product for uh, breast cancer. And there are uh, some additional uh, monoclonal antibody biosimilars here, and new drugs ongoing. So uh, we uh, have focused on the biologics products. And this is the snapshot of uh, market status of CTP-13. Actually, we have uh, uh, launched the CTP-13 in European uh, countries in 2013 
From that time, the market share has uh, dramatically increased. So at the third quarter in uh, 2016, the market share is about uh, 32% uh, from the IMS data. And EU big five countries, the market share of CTP-13 is approximately uh, 31% or more. And actually, in these countries, the um, market share of CTP-13 uh, is exceeding the uh, volume of the Remicade. Actually, this data is the combined the data uh, for Remsima by Celtron Healthcare and Inflectra by Pfizer, our partner company. So the actual volume is um, half and half by Remsima and Inflectra. And CTP-13 is approved now in 79 countries which include Colombia. And for, uh, we are trying to provide the uh, anti-drug antibody and pharmacokinetic kit, kit to manage patient response uh, through this kind of personalized tool. Uh, actually, it can provide the patient to measure the serum uh, infliximab level and anti-drug antibody in patient. So helping the patient gain a better understanding uh, for the factors may uh, affect the patient uh, status. So uh, we proceed the development process and the commercialization will be this uh, coming uh, April or later. So and uh, we're going to see more uh, partner companies uh, which are ready to uh, distribute this commercial kit. And for the um, uh, convenient treatment for the patient, uh, we have developed a new formulation, subcutaneous form of infliximab. Actually, um, European Medicines Agency consider uh, this uh, sub-Q form as a biosimilar, but USFDA have something different point of view. USFDA uh, see uh, this um, subacute form is a kind of a new market for the biosimilar. So uh, for the first time, uh, uh, it is enough to have one pivotal study, but uh, from the uh, requirement from the USFDA, we have two additional um, pivotal studies. Uh, one is uh, IBD population, and the other is rheumatoid population. Uh, the part one is in each study is to find out the optimal dose, and uh, uh, which is a fa phase one study. And part two is based on the non-inferiority approach. Uh, so to um, uh, uh, for the efficient uh, regulatory review process, uh, in part of the study, we combine the character of phase three and phase phase three and phase two study. So uh, the uh, data uh, will be the data of part one will be available uh, in this October or November, and we are still proceeding the uh, part two studies. Maybe the part two, uh, the result of the part two. Uh, will be available next year. And after the approval of um, uh, CTP-13 uh, on IB, IBD indication based on the concept of extrapolation, the several extensive uh, real-world experience um, uh, has demonstrated the efficacy and safety of CTP-13 in inflammatory bowel disease. So, uh, as of January uh, 2017, uh, 25 types of IBD studies um, is conducting, and uh, there are two uh, RCT studies, North Switch and 3.4 uh, CD studies, uh, which is um, uh, published, uh, which is announced in uh, April 2017 in this February. And there are uh, additional two types of observational study, which is Project Bio, uh, 
Uh, Project Bio is a community-based study uh, which is conducted in Italy. Uh, you can uh, see uh, this uh, Project Bio uh, uh, on the website. Uh, actually, the paper on this Project Bio uh, has been published uh, in uh, Informative Bowel Disease Journal in this February. And the Hungarian studies uh, conducted by Professor Kikse is um, very uh, important during the trial. And also, uh, we um, have collected uh, real-world real data. So, uh, from the recent reports uh, from our company, uh, there are uh, approximately more than uh, 8,000 uh, patients uh, who were exposed by CTP-13 in RA, AS, IBD, psoriasis, and multi indications. The number of the patients uh, who are exposed in CTP-13 is dramatically uh, increased. And this is the last slide which I have today. Uh, we will uh, keep doing the interaction with key stakeholders, healthcare professionals, payers, and patient advocacy groups. Uh, keep the, our uh, uh, strategy uh, of our key biosimilars. So uh, we will continuously uh, uh, doing the clinical trial and keep, uh, keep in touch with some key stakeholders in Global Congress, such as ECHO, UGW, and APDW, DDW, and especially in PENCO, DDW, in LATAM region. So, uh, thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.